Okay, so here we are in Logic and we're having a look at Smart EQ 2 from the guys over at Sonable. If you're unfamiliar with the concept of what these guys do with their EQs, uh, I've done a couple of videos previously. I'll link those in the descriptions down below. You can check those out. But essentially what they do is to try and give you uh, an EQ that makes sense for the sound you're working on and makes sense for the listener rather than you being able to do these really harsh and sharp uh, adjustments and peaks it will curve the sound out based on the type of sound profile you're going for and they're generally pretty useful at helping you shape sounds and guide a bit of EQ especially um, like beginner stage where you're not quite sure what to grab it can really help you out in that respect so the Smart EQ 2 works a little bit differently it's got my favorite feature which is resizability right down the corner here I know I'm a geek for loving that, but any GUI that supports that is good in my book. Uh, more importantly though, it works a little bit differently and in a pretty smart way. So let me break it down for you. Across the top here, we've got this uh, like profile section. It lets us know um, where we're at in terms of Hertz, the strength and width being applied to the profile. Um, where it says profile, there's a nice little gray arrow, arrow. We can drop that out and we get some different profiles in here. Um, we've got a nice little bunch of different ones here. And these are the profiles based on what the EQ is going to adjust to. We'll just leave it to standard for the minute, although we'll probably switch it to kick drum as that were, that's where we've got this first one. Now, just next to it here, we've got like this record enable button in green and you'll notice one of the points on the EQ is highlighted in the same color and if we select it it selects the whole frequency band if we roll our mouse wheel on it we can narrow it down uh, this is our profile EQ so if I was to boost that up a little bit see how we get this weird EQ curve and that's based on what we've recorded in on this kick drum Now, if I was to switch this profile now from standard to the kick drum one, see how we get a different performance and a different type of EQ. Now, how it applies is not necessarily based that much on um, the hertz that we've got it on that because I've got the whole band covered but if we use our mouse wheel just narrow that EQ down uh, narrow the Q value down it does only affect a small area so you know this this is just on the kick drum on this particular track here really low end basic kick if I did only want to be affecting the low end area or I do just want to tweak the high end we can narrow it down or we can affect the whole spectrum I can just bring out the click like that. And on top of that, we can also EQ individually. Now, something I'd like you to note here, if I were to EQ this down here, it's a nice, smooth, regular EQ band, right? However, if I EQ something up here, it takes into account the profile, right? It's not becoming a smooth EQ band. It's got these bumps and dips on it based on the sound. So if I was to bring this to here, it's gonna do the same thing to the low end. And if we just roll it out so it covers the whole spectrum, it's gonna do it across the board. What it's doing here is working to that profile so that no matter how much I reduce down here, it's still keeping those important areas that it's discerned uh, are going to apply well to a kick drum profile. We've kind of messed everything up here, so we just flatten that out. So for example, uh, this kick's really, really low end. It's got a lot of bass in it, but there's not much pop. Let's just see if we can maybe reduce the, the subbiness and bring a little bit of the pop out using the kick drum profile. So that's actually done it pretty much just by bringing the profile up. Um, but perhaps we want to control this a little bit. So we can just use an EQ just to bring that back down to where it was. And we've got this big pop coming out. Now, one thing that's really uh, important to note is when you're looking and EQing kind of visually here, to be honest, I find it quite useful to go into like the 6 dB view. This is a 24 dB view. So we're doing these huge movements, but they feel quite small. 
However, if we zoom into six, we can see now that they're actually pretty extreme when we uh, come down to it. So let's maybe reduce that back down a bit. And I tend to work in here because EQ in more than six dB when mixing uh, generally tells me that the sound's just not suitable for what we're after. Um, that's kind of my limit. Creative EQ go to town, but mixing wise, we don't want to be doing these mega adjustments. So zoom into the uh, six dB overall and that gives us three up and three down by the way so it's six across the hole if you want uh, six up and six down it'd be in 12 so we can do something a little bit more like this now and maybe we just want to keep that actually around zero let's just a b it real quick cool so it's dipping out in the mids and some of the boominess is going away um that's probably going to be around this area here so we can just dip that out a little bit further. Yeah, so that's doing a nice job, right? A and B it. Check it in context across the drum bus. Cool, so that's with it off. Sweet, so it stands out quite a bit more straight away. So when I disable it, um, it's dropping out of time a little bit. I've got quite a bit of lag because I'm recording the screen at 5K on this big project. But uh, if we just stop it for a second. Yeah, you know, that's bringing out the tops of the kick drum quite nicely. Uh, we've not done a mega boost. It's only sort of like, what, two, two, what, dB and a half maximum, really? Maybe pushing towards the two dB marker. A really nice bit of EQ, and it's super specific to that sound because we captured a bit of its profile and then applied an important profile to it. Uh, let's have a look at maybe the snare for the next one. Cool, so I've got a nice little snappy, rattly uh, snare sample just sat in the top of this. So again, let's use our profile. Let's stick it on something sensible like snare drum. Let's capture it a little bit. You can see it adjusting there. That's probably enough to give us an idea of what to work with. So it's taking out quite a lot of the low end. Um, it's giving us a boost a little bit above 200, which is probably about right. Um, your boost for your snare and like its impact point is usually around 200, a little bit above in this case. Uh, it dipped out some of the high end, but giving us some of the real highs back in. Yeah, let's push it to the extremes and see if we still like it. Not too shabby, I like, I like what it's doing. Um, I'd maybe let it leave some of this low end in. So we can look at what the other EQ parameters do now. If we select this EQ here, you see the color changes at the bottom to the band that we have selected. And we can hit this little arrow here, bring everything up, and we can change the filter types and uh, the Q, uh, even go to mid side if we want. We're just gonna keep this on this shelf here and we're just gonna uh, shelf it back up. So we've got some of that low end still in. And we're gonna use the band below and we're gonna turn that into a high pass. Uh, cool, something to note real quick. If it's set to zero and high pass is engaged, it actually still disables the band. We have to sort of engage it into high pass by giving it some reduction. And then we can give it a Q just to roll it off. So instead I want that uh, low end right through 200 to still be there, but rolled off a bit at the end because we don't need the real low. So we've just filtered it away after keeping everything else back together there. So with the kick drum in, with the kick drum layer, cool, it's starting to roll quite nicely. Let's just A and B it real quick. Cool, 
Yeah, it's balanced out quite nicely. What it's really done is um, there's quite a lot of 1K presence, so it's dipped that out and it's balanced it out with this sort of 2 through to 5K, so it's more of a flat response rather than peeking through at the 1K, but it works, it's nice, it's giving us a good profile. Um, let's test out the whole drums bus and see if it stands out nicely still. Yeah, sticking through nicely. Fab, so that's the most base feature that Smart EQ does. In the next video, future videos, we'll look at the mid side processing as well as the panning options and some of the stereo effects that we can play around with in the Smart EQ. But right there, that's its primary function and that's where it really does shine. And with the different profiles, we can go across a whole variety of different sounds and there are others that can be downloaded as well. So in the settings section, we have a profile management and we can import more there or in fact, make our own by capturing different sounds and getting those custom profiles made that way. So I hope that was helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next video to learn a little more about Smart EQ too.